One reoccurring question that I have when working with new students in my online web training is regarding impact, and they'll load an instance of impact within the arrange view here, and a track is created, but when they go to the mix console at some point during their song creation process, they notice they have lots of different channels for the impact, and they're confused as to why I only brought in one impact, so why do I have so many channels within the mix console here? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll open up our mix console. Let's come to our instruments here. And for our personas, let's go ahead and expand that out. And we'll drag this impact into our arrange view. And you'll notice that in our track column, a track gets created. And I'm just going to change this color. So we can see our instrument track that's been created. So we can store our MIDI recordings here. And then at the bottom, we see we have a channel for this impact, one channel for one instrument. So that seems to make sense. And even if we come to the drop down menu here to choose a preset, if I come to the gold baby drums and select, say, this first one here, when I select this kit, this preset, then we can see we still have one channel for this impact. But you'll notice that if we were to come back to our preset menu, let's collapse this gold baby folder and come to the personas the drums here and then i'll open up this full kit and just take note of the channels within the console once i select that you'll see that we have multiple channels now for this one instance of impact and this is what seems to confuse a lot of people but what we want to do is take a note of the bottom right corner of each of these pads so these pads can trigger our sounds, right? And we can see in the bottom right-hand corner, we have these two circles and then a number. So this one, we have one, here we have two, and then we have three. So what these numbers represent are different channels that are being added for our pads, for these samples, these individual drum sounds. So when I trigger the kick, we can see that that says one. Okay, so we can see the view meter is active for our channel one here. Now this one, our snare, is actually saying two. So when I trigger this with the mouse, we can see that its signal is coming out through channel two. So with some of these presets, these kits that we're making use of, they're pre-mapped to different channels. If I move on to the hi-hat, then we can see that this says three. Okay, and so we can see this is coming out of channel three within our console. Now if you take note here, these are all colored the same. These are hi-hats, so it would make sense that you would want these to be all on the same channel, channel 3, 3, 3, and 3, and the same color for these sim similar uh, percussion sounds. Now our tom, we have a 10 inch, 12, 14, and so on. These are all going out on channel 4, so when I trigger, we can see the view meter is active for channel 4. And of course, the colors are all the same. At the top, we have Crash. These are all the same, but just different sizes and uh, styles. But we can see in the bottom right-hand corner, these are going out on channel five. So when I trigger, we can see channel five, the view meter is active for these sounds. And again, they all have the same color of red, including these, the ride down below, which is also on five. So this is why you have these additional channels within your mix console because of these different settings in the bottom right hand corner. And this is intended to make your mixing process a bit easier. So these are separated on different channels and then you can adjust the levels according to how you'd like for it to sound. Also with panning, that's gonna be better for panning because we, don't, we do have a pan and gain control for each individual pad. So if I select our kick, if I click at the bottom here at the center, then I can select that without auditioning the sound, but we can see if I adjust its panning, and then let's move over to our snare, we can see this, this is still pan center. So we can do some gain adjustment, taking the snare up, coming back to our kit. That's still on the default of zero dB, but let's control click to take these back. But it's going to be a more convenient to Go ahead and work with your mix, your levels and panning within the mix console versus hopping back and forth to your impact. So if your channel here is too loud, you can adjust its level here instead of coming up to the 
impact and then making sure that you have the right sound selected. We're actually on four, so you need to figure out this here. Whereas you're typically, typically you wanna have your toms balanced out and you can do that all in one go with the fader here. Now at this time we only have five channels going on, but we have a lot more that we can make use of. And when we come to the top of the impact here, we have this outputs button. So if I click on that, we can see our active five channels because they all have the check mark next to them. Now if you notice in our mix console, you can see one, two, three through five. That ties in with that. If I were to go ahead and start checking some of these other boxes for stereo six, we can see that pops up in our console, seven, eight. So these are stereo channels that are being added. We can also add additional mono channels, 16 to be exact. So if I select this, we can see these are being populated as mono channels within our mix console as well. So just be aware that you can activate and deactivate different outputs by coming to this menu up above, but we'll leave this on the five because that's all that we're making use of for our sounds. We'll close that out. And also wanna make the point that if we come to our instrument rack here within the console, you can, if you're not seeing this, then you can click on this little keyboard icon to make that visible. And then we can come to the impact here, click on the down arrow, and then we can choose to show the channel setup and then we can see these outputs and which ones are active here. So again, let's go ahead and close our impact out by closing there and we'll close out the browser. And then we can see that just as we saw in the impact menu, as soon as I start checking these boxes, then these are going to be populated within our console. If we'd like to hide this view, we just come back to the drop down menu and then deselect show channel setup. Let's go ahead and open up our impact as well because I definitely wanna make note that anytime you'd like to change the channel assignment for any of these pads or add a new one, you can always say for our 19 inch crash, let's select that. That's going out on a stereo channel five because we have stereo, rep the two circles represent stereo. If we'd like to send this out on a mono, say mono one, we can click on this area here, come down to our mono one. Notice that once I click once on that, this channel is now added to our mix console. We can see that's mono and we have a single circle representing a mono channel. So I could come to the 18 inch, let's click in the bottom right hand corner and we'll send this out on mono two. Okay, that's automatically populated within our console. And then if I come over to our instrument rack and let's click on this drop down menu to view our channel setup, then we'll see as we scroll down that these have been activated automatically for our mono one and two. Once we make the selections here, if we come to our crash, bottom right hand corner, I'll click and let's send it out to mono three. Again, that channel has been added mono three in our console and we can see that that's been checked here. If I deactivate these channels, they're removed from the console, the check marks are gone, but take note that these pads are still assigned to the mono three, mono two, and mono one. So we cannot hear those because we've deactivated those channels. So if you're having, a, having an issue with not hearing your audio back when you're triggering, this could be something that you need to check out. Once we come to the mono one and add that back two and three, we can then hear our crash. Okay, so I hope that that clears some things up if you have been a bit confused about all the different channels for impact and how to make use of those, how to activate and deactivate those for your productions. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.